which of the following would never be seen in the given patient? Class 1, class 2, end on or class 3. Now what we see in this given patient is that this is towards the midline. Okay, This is the deciduous first molar that is D. This is the deciduous second molar that is E. This is the maxillary first permanent molar that is 6. Okay, Similarly in the mandibular arch, this is the D, E and 6. Now these red lines which are demarcating these areas, okay, these are the terminal planes. Now the terminal planes are the distal surfaces of the second deciduous molars. The relationship of these terminal planes of the maxillary and mandibular second deciduous molars to each other is going to describe the classification of the molar relationship in deciduous dentition. And this classification was given by Baum, okay, also known as Baum's classification. So here what he did was he related the relationship of the distal surfaces of the maxillary and mandibular second deciduous molar into three relationships. In the first relationship, the distal surfaces were lying in the same line or they were in flush with each other. That's why they are also known as the flush terminal plane. Okay. In the second surface or in the second relationship, what we see is that the distal surface of the mandibular molar is slightly mesial to the distal surface of the maxillary molar. Okay, So the distal surface of the mandibular molar is going to tell us the relationship. Here the distal surface of the mandibular molar is more mesial. So this is the mesial step. Okay. Here, the distal surface of the mandibular molar is more distal as compared to the maxillary molar. So, this is the distal step. Okay, so the nomenclature is based on the distal surface of the mandibular molar. Remember that. So, when the mandibular molar is more mesial, it's mesial step. When the mandibular molar is more distal, it's distal step. Now, what happens is this relationship is, helps us to identify what would be or we could predict the kind of molar relationship that is going to be seen in the permanent dentition on the base of the uh, terminal plane relationship that is seen in the deciduous dentition. So, how these two correlate is, if in the primary dentition, we see, we see that the relationship of the deciduous molars is in a distal step, that is the lower molars are more distally placed. Okay, This shows us that in the permanent dentition, there is a likelihood that this patient is going to develop into a class 2 molar relationship or an end-on relationship. If there is minimal growth, okay, then this distal step is going to shift into a class 2. Okay, so the way the molars are related right now, that is the maxillary molar is more mesial and the mandibular molar is more distal. Similar relationship will be seen even in the permanent molars, okay, when there is minimal growth. If there is going to be a forward growth of the mandible, now the mandible is going to advance. So this relationship where the mandibular molar was more posteriorly placed is now going to slightly get corrected. So it is going to shift into an end-on relationship. Okay. Also, if there is going to be slight mesial movement of the mandibular molars because of growth, this again is going to change the relationship from a distal step okay, into an end-on type of molar relationship. Now, if there was a flush terminal type of a molar relationship, that is both were in the same line. Again, when there is minimal growth, okay, so this dark blue line represents if there is minimal growth, what will happen? So, if there is minimal growth, the same molar relationship is going to replicate in the permanent molars. So, from flush terminal, it will become end on. However, if you expect some growth in the mandibular arch or if there is going to be mesialization of the mandibular, uh, mandibular arch, then we will see that this end-on relationship is going to progress into a class 1 molar relationship. Okay. Now, what about for a mesial step? In mesial step, the mandibular molar is more mesially placed. Okay. So, if there is going to be minimal growth, then it is going to remain in the similar relationship where the mandibular molar is slightly ahead as seen in class 1 molar relationship. However, if there is going to be further growth of the mandible and further mesial movement of the mandibular dental arch, then it is going to relate or it is going to translate into a class 3 type of a relationship. Okay, So here we have been asked which will never be seen. And from the relationship, we can see that the distal surface of the mandibular molar is more distal as compared to the maxillary molar. So, this is a type of distal step. Okay. So,
so a distal step with minimal growth if there is minimal growth is going to result into a class 2 if there is going to be advancement of the mandible it is going to result in an end on relationship if there is going to be further growth of the mandible then it could even uh, end in, in, into a class 1 relationship but the relationship that will never be seen will be a class 3 because there will never be so much growth in the mandible that this relationship so here you can see uh, in the permanent dentition already a class 2 molar relation has been developed in order to go into a class 3 there is going to be unnatural amount of uh, forward positioning of the mandible that needs to take place okay so this will never be seen from class 2 if there is going to be increase in the growth of the mandible it could go to class 1 but it will never be class 3